Hello there! Do you want to learn how to set up a login and registration using Pocketbase and SvelteKit? In this video, we will set up both flows based on the auth logic that we set up in the last video. So check that out if you haven't yet. Additionally, you will now need an SMTP setup inside Pocketbase to send both the verification and password reset emails. I also made a video for that. Just check the description or the I. So let's go. To set up the flows, we will first add a new route called login. This route will take care of both login and registration. And in the next video, we will also add OAuth. In it, we create both a page.svelte and page.server.ts file. First, we will create a simple form inside page.svelte. You can copy the code from the blog post linked in the description if you want. Otherwise, the form consists of an email input, a password input, and then a reset password, login, and register buttons. As you can see, the form uses different form actions to perform the action that we want. You can find the default one for login inside the form tag. It is written as question mark slash login because this is the syntax for a named action. Additionally, you can find the form action attributes on the buttons, register and reset password, which just perform a different named action. Now we jump into our page.server.ts file and add the first action for register. For that, we add a new object called actions and the first key register, which is the name of our action. The action consists of first retrieving the data from the form. It is based on the name attribute on the input fields. Checking that it is valid or in this case that it exists. Then setting the password confirm field because it is required, but it does not exist in our form. Next, we create the user, log the user in and send our verification request. If there is an error, we send that back to the form and thus to the user. And if it is successful, we redirect the user to the dashboard screen. Next, we will make the error that we have thrown visible to the user. Therefore, we open our page.swelt file and in the script tag, we create a new variable called form of type form action. When a form action finishes, the results are written to this variable automatically. Now we use it to add an error message on the screen. For that, we check if the form failed and if so, display the error message. With that, we have the possibility to register a new user. Next up, we need to allow the user to log in. For that, we will create the second form action called login inside of page.server.ts. In the action, we again get the form data, check that it is valid, and if so, log the user in using the password and email. If it fails, we send an error message to the user, and if it works, we re redirect the user to the route slash dashboard. As you can see, this is really similar to the registration flow, just without the user creation and the verification request. And with that, we now allow the user to log in as well. Currently, the user can still access the route slash login, also if he's authenticated. In the next step, we will prevent that. For that, we will create a load function inside page.server.ts. The function is called whenever the route is requested by a user. Inside the function, we will check if the user is logged in and if so, redirect him to dashboard. And if we now check, we can see that we cannot access slash login anymore 
until we log out. And finally, it can always happen that a user forgets their password and therefore we will now give the user the possibility to request a new one. And you guessed it, we need to add another action with the same structure. So we first get the data, validate it, and then request the password reset. If there is an error, we present it to the user. And if it was successful, we keep the user on the same page. And with that, they are also able to reset their password. That's it. With this, we implemented email and password-based login and registration using Pocketbase and SvelteKit. You can find the code in the repository linked below under the branch course-free. In the next part, we will extend the current setup with an OAuth login, for example, with Google. I hope you like the course so far. And if you do, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.